Okay, so this is Fizz2320 Computing 2. This is the second unit on Python syntax. So in the first unit, we uh, went over some basic Python syntax, so expressions and operators, variable naming, input and output functions, and we finished with branching and looping structures. So in this unit, we're going to talk more about loops. So first of all, I want to go over the uh, use of some extra statements um, that you would have been introduced to in Computing 1, but probably won't have used that much. That is break, continue, and then a rather odd one for a loop, which is an else statement. So these are features that Python has that let us go and um, control exactly how a loop operates and uh, what code gets executed when. So to demonstrate how these all work, we're going to write some code that will simply go and get a random number and um, until it sees a random number that's less than 0 0.02, it's going to go and print out a full stop um, and keep going. So the basic um, loop we're going to use is going to look something like this. So uh, we're first line we're importing the random number generator from NumPy. Um, we then create a random number. We then have a while loop, uh, and while the number is greater than 0 0.02, we print a full stop. Um, if you notice, the print statement has an extra end equals quotes quotes on it. That's just um, making sure that the print loop doesn't put a carriage return on the end of every loop, and so the full stops end up going out in a line. Um, and then um, we pick another random number and go back around the loop again. And so if you run this, it'll carry on printing a random number of full stops until it happens to pick a random number that is less than 0 0.02. So that's our basic starting loop. Um, so now suppose that instead we wanted uh, to make sure the loop stopped after 50 iterations or when it picked a random number less than 0 0.02, um, whichever of those two conditions happens first. So we can do that by changing our loop to look um, something a little bit more complicated that looks like this. And so we now need to have a variable to keep track of the iteration we're on. We need to have a variable to go and signal whether we should be stopping or not. And we need to have the same random number that we're picking. And then our while loop now just says while the stop variable, the stop flag, is not true, while it's false, keep going. And then if the number is less than 0 0.02, we set the flag to say stop to be true. Or if the iterations is greater than or equal to 50, we stop, set the stop flag to be true. And if neither of those conditions are true, we print our full stop, we pick a new random number, and we increment the iteration variable. Uh, and then you can see that goes and runs. And if you run that code, it will sometimes manage to run through um, to completion, or sometimes it'll only go for 50 iterations. So the code works okay, it does what it's supposed to go and do, um, but we're suddenly using an awful lot more variables in order to go and do what should be quite a simple task. We've not really made it very much more complicated, but our, our loop has suddenly got twice as complicated at least to work out what's going around. So is there a better way to go and do this? Um, well, Python lets us go and get out of loops early, by using the keyword break. This means that it immediately jumps out of the loop. If you've got nested loops, so a loop inside a loop, then the break just gets you out of the innermost loop um, and leaves you in the, um, at the end of that loop in the, in the outer loop. So here's how we can use the break to simplify our example. So what we've got and done is we've um, been able to uh, get rid of the stop variable um, because we don't need to have a separate variable to signal that we need to go and stop, we can just use break in order to jump out of the loop when we hit the maximum number of iterations. So that loop is a bit simpler, but it's um, uh, and it's that now that it's using the break. However, we still have um, an if statement and an else in there to go and check whether the, it's the iteration that's greater than 50 or whether we're carrying on to print numbers like that. So it's getting going some way, but it, actually the logic of this loop is wrong. So we know that this loop shouldn't execute more than 50 times. So that's much more like a for loop than a while loop. So this is an example where we started off thinking we had the while loop and we want to keep going while some condition was true. But now we've changed it so that we know that we can only run a maximum of 50 times 
and then uh, we want to go and stop or we want to go and stop when something happens first. So in fact we need to go and change it around and use a for loop and instead break when the uh, number is too small. So if we want to write it like that this is how it looks. So we now have for iteration in range 50 um, so that's going to for loop going to run no more than 50 times. We're picking random numbers. If the number is less than 0 0.02 we hit a break otherwise we simply go and do the print. <coughs> so you can see that looks like a much more simple and straightforward loop. Okay so now let's go make our problem slightly more complicated again. Suppose now that we only want to print a full stop if the random number is less than 0 0.8 but um, not to stop the loop from running. So in other words, if the random number is between 0 0.8 and 1, we just want to carry on without doing printing a full stop or anything. If the random number is less than 0 0.02, we want to stop. And if we go for more than 50 iterations, we want to stop. So this is an example where we can make use of the continue keyword. So what continue does is it says OK, finish this iteration of the loop and jump immediately to the next iteration of the loop. So it says don't bother executing any more code on this iteration, but just get, get round to the next iteration. Um, so this works in either a while or a for loop. So this is what our code um, looks like. So again, it's the same basic for loop we had. Um, we're picking the random number. So if the number is less than 0 0.02, then we're saying we want to get out of it. So we have a break. If the number is greater than 0 0.8, then we're saying, ah, well, in that case, just skip over to the next iteration. Pick a new random number and carry on from there. And then only if neither of those two is true will we get to that print line where we print the full stop. So now we'll just go and print um, full stops for not random numbers less than 0, sorry, more than 0 0.02 and less than 0 0.8. OK, so that's fine. But finally for this example, suppose that we uh, wanted to know whether we had escaped from the loop um, early because we'd picked a small random number or whether we'd gone for the full 50 iterations. So again, we could do this by keeping track of the reason why we're exiting. So here I create a, a completed flag variable. Um, so just set it true to start with and then if I hit a number which is less than 0 0.02, so I'm kind of getting out of my loop early, I set completed equal to false and then do the break. So then outside the loop I can say, ah, if I completed, then um, with completed equal to true, then I can say I printed all 50 iterations. And again, that's fine, it works, but I've just created an extra variable simply just to go and say, how did I get out of the loop? So this is where Python has a special bit of syntax that most programming languages don't have, which is you can put an else on the end of a loop. And what an else on a loop means is I did not break out of this loop. So in other words, the loop finished in its usual way. It didn't terminate early because it encountered a break statement. And this is really handy sometimes because it saves you having to go and check for these um, exactly why you got out of the loop. You can you can determine whether your loop had finished normally or not. So here's how you use it. Again it's the same basic structure but you see we're not creating the completed variable. We don't need it. It's just doing the same as we've done from the example before last where we just had it um, break for small numbers or continue for uh, very large numbers and definitely finish after 50 iterations. But then the else is now where the new bit comes in. And you see that else, that else is not aligned to the if, that else belongs to the for loop. So if you look at the indentation, there's no indentation in front of the else, which tells you that it goes with the for and not with the if statement. So that else only gets triggered if you didn't break. And the only way you didn't break is if you got round through 50 iterations of the code. So anything that puts inside the else clause, you know that it can only have happened because we ran out of the for loop um, in the usual way. We'd run out because we'd gone for more than 50 um, iterations. And again, if you run this, sometimes it'll print finished all 50 iterations and sometimes it won't, depending on why the loop finishes. <coughs>